Hello everyone, this is Super Dimensional Bun. Today I'll be reviewing Bandai's figure rise standard uh, Son Goku from the anime series Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball GT, all of the above. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a quick look at this. So this kit was released in 2017 and retails for 2,500 yen. Alright, so this is some of the close-ups of it. I pretty much did mostly a straight build on this kit. Um, there's not a lot of things that need painting. What I did paint was the red lines on the boots, these tassel-like things, and the bottom of the feet, which was originally just orange. It's, I don't know, I painted it kind of a yellowish color, a mustard yellow. And I actually did apply some of the stickers, like the symbols. And that was it. Oh yeah, and I painted the tongue on um, the other faces that come with this kit. Alright, so let's go ahead and start with the articulation. Got the head. So, so move side to side a little bit. It has a long neck. So you can actually look down. That's about as far as I'll look up. Okay. It won't turn three. Actually, you could force it to go 360. All right. Kind of unnatural, but and not necessary. All right. So that's it for the head. You got the waist. So you got quite a bit of movement with the waist. You can see here. Bend forward a little bit, bend back. All right, and you can, ooh, you can twist. So there are actually two points of articulation. So right here above the belt and inside the waist is another ball joint. Gets a little tight when you get up to here. I don't want to force it. it I think the part was already. Um, Having some stress marks, so I didn't want to. I don't want to uh, push it. All right, the arms. You got quite a bit of uh, articulation here. So, first of all, you got shoulders that can bend forward. You can see that from the back. Okay. And then you got the blue parts. Right. All right, and you also got like a pig-like motion right at the where the shoulder hits the bicep. Okay, so that could spin the arm 360. So now the arm can go like so, and of course if you turn it all the way, you can turn it all the way up. So the arms look kind of short, don't they? They sit kind of low. Um, on the torso. I don't know if you can actually raise that any higher. No, you can't. That's mainly because these shoulders only go forward. So, you know, try to flex his muscles like so and pull his shoulders back in. Okay, now the elbow can bend more than 90 degrees, let's say. 120 maybe. 10. I don't have my compass. <laughs> All right, straight. And of course, uh, the hands are on ball joints. Like so, so spin 360. Move them side to side. They feel a little loose, but um, they still they stay in place, so it's not a big deal. All right. Now let's move to the legs. So. Um, uh, see here, you can bend out a little bit. So, I don't know if you saw my bu uh, build up video, um, the legs are connected to the hip by uh, two independent pegs. So, you can pull them, you can move them around a little bit. Okay, so it extends the legs a little bit, I guess, maybe when you're doing certain poses. Okay, well. See, there's the um, 
peg and connector. Boy, all right. Shove that back in. Put the leg out a little bit. Much different than any Gundam that I've ever built. All right, leg can go like it can bend back, but it looks odd. All right. Okay, the knee. So you can bend it that far up. It's pretty good, actually. Um, okay, then back. Let's see how far forward can it go. So, and it go all the way like so. It's kind of an odd pose, but uh, it really doesn't look good in that position. But he can do a somewhat decent kick. All right? All right. Um, let's see, the legs can twist, you know, like a little bit. Get the feet out like so. So you got some range of motion there. All right. And uh, the boots, so you can swivel them all the way around. They're on those old style swivel pegs. And the feet. So. Well, let me see if I can show you guys. So this peg can only go up and down. It doesn't turn here, it only turns up here. So don't force it too much. All right, and the foot can, can turn only like so. Which is pretty much where the, the way because of this peg right here. It swivels on that peg and can only go up and down. Whoa! Goku needs to invest in new shoes. All right, so that's the range of motion of the feet. So that was uh, it for the articulation. Um, it stands pretty well. Oh yeah, splits. Let's see how far I can split, huh? arms out so the arms can go straight but the legs can't really split very far this is as far up the, as the arms can bend upward without turning them okay all right so let's take a look at accessories once you can stand standing is a little odd because of the way the feet are built so just a note, you might have to turn the feet out a little bit to, uh, to get them in a good standing position. So this kid comes with two extra faces. You got screaming face. That's us see, see the red tongue in there. They, ben, I provided a sticker for that, but uh, I thought it would look odd and all bent out of shape, so just painted it. And then you got regular smiling goofy face. Now there are some lines here, I don't know if you can really see it. You can just use a pen or marker and fill in the lines and wipe the excess off. All right. So the way to replace the face is you pull off Goku's front hair. He looks like a old balding old man. All right. Rip off his face. Ah. And let's go ahead and just put the screaming face on. All right. That his hair back on. So you can see his nice rectangular peg goes in pretty well. Alright, there you go. Kinda looks like he's laughing. Alright. What else do we get? You get four extra set of hands. Now here's a two finger hand for when he's saluting you. Or picking both his nostrils at once. It's only really meant to do one pose when, well, at least on the box. It's when he's, um, yeah, like I said, saluting you with his happy face. So just imagine, like so. All right. 
well, maybe also is in, instant tran uh, transmission or, or transportation or whatever it's called. Instant transmission. And then you also got the open palm hand. Not, not sure. I'm sorry. He doesn't salute with this. He salutes with this. That's when he had that goofy face on. When I dropped the face. <coughs> so. See how it looks, make, makes some sense? This is only for that pose when he's doing his um, instant transmission teleportation thing technique. Or it could be pointing with two fingers, whatever you like. And last but not least, you got the open palms, or the, it's for when you, you do a pose for a Kamehameha, which is, of course, uh, Goku's signature blast. Let's go ahead and pop those in. Uh, it looks kind of creepy. <laughs> All right, so now with this hands comes special little power-up ball. Now, Bandai provided a, um, a foil sticker to put inside. There's a little ball on the inside. And you put a foil sticker on it to make it look more shiny. All right, so pose them. Let's see if I can pose them really quick. All right, get the legs bent outward. Turn the palm like so. All right, get the hands ready. Maybe bend them forward a little bit. Turn them. All right, and then you put the hand, the ball right there. So it looks like he's powering up. Okay, pretty nice accessory actually. And last but not least. You got the Kamehameha Wave Blast. So it comes with all these little pieces that you put together. And this is the only piece that doesn't seem to want to stay in place. Now, they all fit in a specific way, so then you know you don't leave, you can't just put them anywhere. So this one falls out like so. Um, I'll have to think, think of some kind of solution for that, like maybe adding just some glue that'll harden and Make it a little thicker so it didn't slot. So to hold this up, you get a little stand. Now this actually can you can adjust this thing. I think yeah, to certain heights. Um, but for this purpose, it's supposed to be this level. So go ahead and straighten the peg here and insert like so. So this. These two accessories are actually different than from uh, the Super Saiyan version of this kit and the um, Super Saiyan Blue version. Um, those were more basic than this one. I think it's mainly because um, to help differentiate, I guess, or help sell this kit, you get a different blast. So you take this out. Oops. And down goes the wave. So. How do I pose this to make it look like he's blasting? And now it goes his hand. So the shoulders, you know, coming out that way definitely helps in the pose. Something like that. Oh, maybe a little closer. All right. So those are all the little accessories that come with this kit. Pretty cool. Um, you know, it's nice shiny blue. Got a nice little ball that you can use for whatever you want. Got a little work to put on this, but that's it for the accessories. Now, pros and cons of this kit. Now, let's start with the cons. My biggest gripe about this kit, I guess, so far, is the lower legs. 
right here the, right, where they connect to the boots. They don't seem to fit perfectly. They got this big old gap at the bottom. Um, I have to think of some way, maybe carve out a little of the plastic on the inside so then this thing can close properly. You can see on both sides, the front and the back. But it looks pretty ugly. I, I mean, it bothers me, okay? Kind of slightly, I don't know, kind of a perfectionist in this sense. Um, yeah. I mean, you could always fill it in with putty and paint this guy. But I don't have the time for this, <laughs> so um, we'll just leave it at that. I mean, like I said, I may just shave some plastic on the inside and hopefully it'll close by then. All right, next, I guess the feet don't don't help them stand very well. I mean, they rotate side to side and all, but you have to get his legs in the right position to get him flat on his feet. Turn the feet, uh, the boots themselves, but the angling has to be just right for the feet to stand. All right. Um, what are the cons? Well, these stickers, they obviously don't go flat on the plastic because um, all these mock folds that are on the kit. So we got a little, you can actually peel this thing off because it's not flat on. Not really sure what Bandit could really do about that. Um, you could probably provide some decals, but then again, it would have the exact same problem. I don't know how well decals can actually uh, stay on um, different levels of plastic. So, yeah. Also, let's see, the, the, color, the colors are alright. Um, I always imagine the, the orange is of uh, Goku's costume's a little deeper, maybe a little more red in it. This is more yellowish orange. So it's not quite right, I guess. Put the fist back in. Um, yeah, so, anyway. One thing I wanted to note is that these hands, um, they're exactly about the same size as any Gundam hand, so. You can easily replace it. Well, obviously not with every hand. I was doing it earlier. I'm pushing out on videotaping, it's not cooperating. So, here's the hand, left hand. This is the Jugen hands. They, they fit well. Alright, so you can actually you know, create a cyborg Goku if you really wanted. Anyway. Yeah, and obviously with Gundam hands, you can get them guns. <laughs> Alright, so here's my Sasabi. Let's see if this hand fits. Alright, take that freezer. <laughs> so yes, you can use almost any Gunpla accessory. That's kind of cool, huh? <laughs> anyway, uh, but not right. So, comparisons, obviously. Um, wait, what was I going with this? So, pros and cons. Um, pros, you get a good um, figure of Goku. And, um, you know, he's well proportioned. Um, sometimes you think his arms should be a little longer, but when he's standing like this, you know, just standing still, it looks fine. The reason why I bought Sazavi out was they're about the same size, obviously. This is. A larger than a regular Gundam kit, so here is the build burning, and you can see how um, small it is compared to Goku. Um, yeah, but anyway, back to the pros. Um, relatively good um, articulation. So there was originally the Master Grade version of Goku kit out there. I wasn't willing to spend what was it, at least what was it four thousand yen for it. Eh, you know, I wasn't too. I'm not that huge of a uh, Dragon Ball fan, but enough to actually want a decent figure of them. So, the figure I standard um, kit was, you know, priced right for me. Especially since, you know, obviously I, I get 144 scale kits. I'm not into giant Plamo or Kunpla. Um, 
yeah, I mean, this articulation is great. Um, the legs, I wish could bend a little better. I mean, you, you try to do a kicking pose, you can only do it mainly sideways. Going forward, uh, the hip kind of gets in the way. So that's why it bends. Instead of going up, it goes kind of outward. So anyway, um, the accessories are nice. I just wish this one piece fit in better. But other than that, no, it's fine. Oh yeah, last accessory was the part that you fit onto um, action base. So it just a, pops into the peg and then it goes around his waist and crotch. So you can do poses from there. Um, like I said, okay, so what was that? Okay. So you get nice articulation. A good sized figure, 2,500 yen, so decent price. Um, what else? Nice accessories. You got extra faces, extra hands. Yeah, I mean, oh, why did I get this type versus uh, Super Saiyan? Well, I like the black hair on them better than than um, golden hair or even a blue hair. Tell you the truth, it just maybe it just doesn't look natural to me. <laughs> that's that's personal opinion. Um, I like his standard look. The hair looks interesting. It's this is iconic hair. Okay. Um, what else? But yeah, decent kits, good articulation. Um, yeah, I guess this weighs down. You could use some help on the articulation there. Um, painting, really down, just a minimum. I mean, red lines, a little yellowish. That's all I did with this kit, besides the tongue. Um, so yeah, it was kind of a quick build. I mean, I actually built this thing in a week. Um, mainly because I was cutting all the screws out, and I was only doing that like maybe an hour a day. Um, yeah, so 2,500 yen, not a bad kit. Anyway, um, tune in again next time. Uh, please subscribe, and I will see you then.